Thank we you. thought we'd do, we'd have three cups of tea, and we were hoping you would tell us a little bit more about what, what it means to have three cups of tea. Okay. Well, thanks, and I'm really excited to be here with Santa Barbara Middle School. My name is Greg Mortensen, and I've been working for 17 years to set up schools, mostly for girls in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And this is a really like cool interview. Like I've never been able to take my shoes off and sit on the floor and have some tea. Um, I wrote a book called Three Cups of Tea, and it's about what uh, about mostly you know children going to school in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And what three cups of tea means is that the first cup you're a stranger. And the second cup, you become a friend. And the third cup of tea, you become family. So like, we've got three cups of tea here. So, um, and it doesn't mean you just drink tea and have peace in the world, but it means is that we have to build relationships with each other. One of the things that we, I emphasize in our schools too, besides you know math and English and other languages is, is uh, we put a big emphasis on play. Um, Many kids who've been in war, they live in very remote areas, they, they have to work, they never had a chance to play. Um, I think play is very important for um, kids to learn about how to get along and have disputes and how to solve your problems. We also put some emphasis on art and music. Um, a lot of kids who've been in war, they have a lot of, they've seen a lot of really horrific things happen and they don't want to share their feelings and, and it's often through art or music like art um, you give some kids some color crayons and paper and the first few pictures they draw are very kind of scary looking it's like you know very violent scenes and guns and landmines going off but then you'll see after a few months they start drawing like mountains and flowers and but it's a way kids can bring their feelings out Thank you. So in your book you stated that when you educate a boy you educate an individual, but when you educate a girl you educate a community. With the schools you've been building, have you seen this quote come to life? Yeah, I've really seen, there's been, is your name Lily? Yeah. Yeah, Lily. Um, I've seen a lot of changes happen, but it takes like 10 or 15 years. See, generally when girls get an education, they tend to come back to their communities and like worldwide it's about two-thirds of women they tend to go back to their communities now boys uh, maybe about a third of them come back to their community so and also girls tend to teach their mother how to read and write boys they don't do that as much mm -hmm. so what that saying says if you teach uh, if you educate a girl you educate a community it really holds true that um, and women also, you know, women bring life into the world, and women nurture life, and women are really the promoters of education in any society. Thank you. Sometimes we can see boys get turned off by all this educate girls stuff. How can we help educate them too? Well, yeah, you're right. Um, Three Cups of Tea, I wrote a young reader's book, where there's girls on the cover, and it's all about girls, so a lot of guys, especially middle school, like junior high school, they're like, hey, this, you know, like, what about us? And so I think it's important to know that what I'm doing another Young Readers book, but I'm stressing in there what the lack of education can do. Often boys are turned into militants or soldiers because they don't have an education. We're also um, teaching boys here about why they should respect girls and why, you know, not why education both boys and girls is important but um it's um and a lot of guys you know around the world they don't think girls should go to school they think they should work they should like work in the fields and but they they don't they really shouldn't go to school and girls are often used as uh, labor forces in villages and rural areas it's really important though we saw that you liked the very hungry caterpillar and the little prince and where the sidewalk ends and some of our other favorite books. Are they are are there the same kind of books there in Afghanistan? The kids love one of the things that happens in like rural Afghanistan Pakistan that doesn't happen much in the US is is storytelling and 
generally stories are told by the grandparents, the elders, and they're, they're second generation stories. And the stories often, they're very beautiful stories. They're, we might say ballads here, or odysseys, or, and the stories are about lessons in life. And they often have a main character who sometimes uh, often makes a lot of mistakes and kind of bumbles along. But as, a, as the kids grow up, they, they follow the same kind of characters as they grow up. It's like, um, I don't know how to explain, explain it here in the States, but um, the storytelling is a very rich tradition in very like rural areas. And it's often a way, too, to tell people about their folklore and their culture and their heritage and traditions and I wish we could do that more in the US and one of the things we do in our schools is we have the elders come in two or three times a week and do storytelling um, because I noticed that when kids learn how to read and write often then they put everything in the books but they don't do the storytelling with their grandparents. If it takes stones to make schools what does it take to make teachers? Well, that's a really good question. I was talking to some graduate students at University of California, Santa Barbara, about this, and you guys, you, well, I've, you guys really know about this more than they do, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to have teachers if you have students, and it's it's an important uh, thing to consider that um, to train teachers and have good teachers. You can't just put kids in a school and expect them to be able to learn. So, um, what does it take to make teachers? Well, teaching is a calling, and it's a very important. And I think in our in our society too, we don't we don't respect teachers enough. We don't give them enough pay, and um, but teachers. Teachers are really the heartbeat of education. A building doesn't mean anything if you don't have a, you know, a teacher, and the teachers are like a heartbeat. Who decides what the kids are taught in your schools? Well, the communities decide. We also have a kind of a, a curriculum, but our kids learn, you know, reading, writing, math, and all those things. Science. They also learn uh, five languages by fifth grade. Um, they also learn hygiene, sanitation, nutrition. Do you study about like hand washing or hygiene in your school or nutrition a little bit? And I guess you, um, also they learn about um, um, the storytelling, so they can learn from their elders. And um, but the curriculum is kind of decided by the community, also a little bit by us, and also the government. But we it's it's a mix of many different um, people deciding about the curriculum. Okay. Well, you've been asked a lot of questions over the years. Which one would you, what is a question you'd like to be asked? And what would be the answer? Well, the question I've never been asked, but I always like to answer, I'd like to answer that is, if I really think the world is going to be a better place in one or two generations, I definitely think so. It's, and it's because I visit about 100 and 120 schools a year, you know, both public and private schools, and um, and there is such a more yearning and desire for from students and kids to make the world a better place. And there's also so much more community service and service learning and civic engagement. Do you have any community service in your school, or yeah. you probably do a lot of that? And um, 20 or 40 years ago, that wasn't it wasn't the norm. But today, um, um, there's more and more there's more and more consciousness of that. So I really think, you know, I, I'm very optimistic about the future. Adults, we worry too much and we think the world is turning upside down, but I really think the world's a better place because I've, I've seen, met, I've met so, met so many kids around the world and so many schools. So I, I'm very confident um, that we can make the world a better place, but we're going to need kids to help us do that. How do you say thank you in, in Arabic? Um, well, in, uh, in Arabic it's shukran, shukran. In uh, uh, Dari it's tashakur, shakur. And then in uh, Urdu it's shukuriya. And there's different. Um, in Balti, which is classical Tibetan, it's bakshish. Bakshish means. Uh, so there's many ways to say thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. Oh, you did a great job. I haven't had an interview like that, I don't think. Have you? Like CNN, one. BBC, like nobody. Like That's that is totally. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Christian Science Monitor, even. Like. <laughs>